Hello friends and not friends and other people as well. Uh, this is my first entry in my whole progress report thing. Yeah, I'm here. I'm in Calgary right now. This is my room. Um, it's pretty messy right now. Uh, it looks better than when I got here though, and I just had a bunch of shit all over the floor. I guess I just wanted to um, start by talking about the entire trip to get here. <clears throat> I left and went up into Quebec, and actually getting into the country was really easy. I was expecting this huge ordeal, and uh, I got there, and the lady uh, came over to my car. She said, where are you going? I said, oh, I'm uh, going to Calgary. She's like, Calgary? I'm like, yeah. She's like, why are you going to Calgary? I'm like, uh, I'm going to get trained to be a professional wrestler, actually. She's like, really? And uh, she was actually really thrilled about it for some reason. I was like, what's your name going to be and stuff? She had a weird accent. <clears throat> I probably butchered the accent entirely, but I don't, whatever. So, um, I got into the country pretty quickly. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, the Aussies that I've met here told me that it was like they got almost interrogated. Uh, me, however, I got in... It took about five minutes, maybe, something like that. So, got into the country and drove through Quebec as fast as I could because I couldn't read any of the signs and I didn't feel like adapting to their uh, culture of being French. So, I just got out as quick as I could. I got into Ontario and I was pretty stoked to be in Ontario. Um, I ended up hating Ontario, though, because it took absolutely forever to get through it. It took probably 24 hours to get through it. And I stayed one night, my first night, I stayed there. And then um, I would have stayed another night there, but I ended up driving something like 15 hours because I really, really didn't want to stay another night there. So I drove another uh, yeah, 15 hours and ended up in, um, what coming next? Was it Winnipeg? Or Manitoba? No, it wasn't, yeah, it was Manitoba, right? Yeah. I got just into Manitoba. And, uh, slept, uh, in my car in the, um, in a little rest place. Stayed there for the night, got up, got into Winnipeg, uh, drove right through it, and then actually ended up staying the night in a motel because I found a cheap one and just wanted to get like a real good night's rest. Because up to that point, I was just sleeping in my car, and it's not like a really, it wasn't like it was a bad thing sleeping in the car, but it takes its toll on you after a while. Um, when you can't like extend your legs when you want to sleep, you know, and you can't just starfish on the bed, because that's what I like to do. Stayed there, left, and then that was my last day, and I was going to be getting here at uh, noon, was the projected time. So I was crossing, I had just gotten into the Alberta, I just passed the sign that says Alberta, and I'm like, yes, you know, I'm finally there, and suddenly, my steering wheel starts shaking, and the engine goes th 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 boom. Big bang. Uh, piston rod breaks right off of the engine, shoots right through the engine, and so I pull over, and there's just smoke bellowing out of it. It's coming into the car, you know, right where I am. I get off on the side of the highway. I go, I pop the hood. I run over and open it up, and there's. Literally, the engine is on fire. There is an open flame. I flag down at someone, and he's nice enough to stop and calls me a tow truck. And the whole time I'm waiting for the tow truck to get there, I'm like thinking about, you know, it's, you know, I'm in that, um, you know, that like broken thing denial that you get in, where you're like, oh, it's not that bad. It's, it'll be fine. It's gonna be like a thirty dollar fix. It'll be, you know, it's a little duct tape. It'll be fine. He gets there and goes, oh, your engine's destroyed. It's gonna be like $5,000 to fix that, so. <sighs> so he drives me, he tows me all the way to a place called Medicine Hat, 
for some reason all the names of places are just things. So he stop, he drops my car off, gives me a number, and he, he uh, manages to help me set up a car rental. So I get a car rental, um, but it's at an airport in Medicine Hat. It's a really, really tiny airport. And I'm like, because uh, I'm really bad with directions. So I'm like, I'm not going to be able to miss this, right? It's going to be very obvious. And he's like, yeah, it's right over there. You can see the airfield. Can't miss it. So, drops my car off, um, and so now I gotta walk to the airport because the airport, the uh, the check-in, sorry, the car rental didn't actually open until 3 p.m. and it was like noon or a little afternoon, it was like one. So I wait around at a McDonald's for a while, and then I decide to walk there. So I have my backpack with all my electronics in it, because I'm paranoid, I don't want to leave with my car alone. Um, and I walk, and uh, I get to the airstrip, and I have the appoint the, uh, the rental, I have it rented for three on the dot. So I gotta be there at three to get it. And um, I end up somehow missing the airport, walking around, I can't, I don't see it. I see buildings in the distance that keep looking like they're the airport, and it's, it'll be like a, a convenience store or something, or whatever, and so now I'm starting to panic, because it's getting close to three, and I need to get my rental, and I'm trying to get here as soon as possible, so I can unpack all my stuff, and I have to get the rental, um, to the airport here by 9 p.m., so I have a time limit. So I end up trying to go to a convenience store and everything's closed because it's Sunday. This is why this the only place I could rent a car was at a friggin' airport. And everything's closed. So I'm just screaming at cars, just saying, I have a question, I have a question. And everybody's just going, vroom, 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 because I'm a guy with a backpack waving down cars on this big strip. Everybody thinks I'm hitchhiking. And so I eventually get... Uh, one person at a stop sign to roll his friggin' window down and just answer my question. And he tells me, oh, uh, airport's back that way, so I gotta run back. So I'm sprinting the length of an entire airfield just to get there on time. And I get there just on time at three. Get the car. Um, and I have to drive back to my old car. Get there. And I'm loading everything in. And... What I forgot to mention was that I, I had just, before this trip, installed a new radio that Tracy uh, graciously gave me, and it was awesome, but so I'm not going to leave it with my dead car, um, so I'm trying to get it out, and I'm just ripping it apart and everything, and there's, two, there's four sockets, and I have a socket wrench set that my dad gave me for the trip, and the only socket that I don't have is the one that I need to get it out. And I just, I flag somebody down. This is before I went to the airport. I actually even flagged somebody down and asked him if he had a socket wrench set, and he did. He let me borrow his 10 millimeter socket. So I loosen it up, give it back to him. So then when I come back, I take the rest of the radio out. I just, I'm unloading everything. I'm just throwing it in this rental car. And uh, I'm trying to take off the back license plate, and one of the um, screws is so rusted that it completely strips with just one turn, just so I can't get it off. So I have to take some wire cutters, and I'm cutting through the license plate, and I rip it off. And the front license plate comes off easily. And yeah, I'm just making sure that I got everything. Everything looks good, you know, I got the registration and blah blah blah. I carve a little heart into the car, you know, before I leave it to die on the side of the road. Or it's already dead. So, oh, I'm getting texts. Friggin' Brennan. Then I drive up here. Um, I make it into Alberta. Uh, I make it to where I'm gonna stay. It takes about 10, 12 trips downstairs here and back to the car which is parked like across the street um, just to 
unload everything because I've got twice as much luggage as I was expecting because most of it was supposed to be sitting in my car. I finish with that, then I drive the car back to the airport. Um, I get to the airport and come to the return and the guy says, uh, oh, did you get the uh, gas plan? And I'm like, no, what does that mean? And he's like, we have to fill the tank. This is the first car I've ever rented, so I didn't know that you had to return it with a full tank of gas. So he's like, you got like 10 minutes if you can get to a gas station and get it back here. So I drive and the GPS takes me to a place where it says there's a gas station, but there's nothing there. It's just like, I guess there was a gas station there once, but there's not now, it's just a wasteland. So I got like, I only got like seven minutes left. So I drive down to the 7-Eleven and then I can't figure out how to, how to open the, the gas can thing. So it takes me a minute to figure out that. And so I finally figure it out. Oh, and before you say anything, the reason why I couldn't figure it out is because it's like a 2006, 17, 2017 model, and I've been driving a 1997 model, which is, what, 20 years ago? Yeah, 20. I can do math. So I managed to get it open, fill up the tank, and I just book it back to the airport, and I pull in, because he's going to charge me quadruple if I return it without the gas. So I just barely make it pull in and park it at 9, which is right on the deadline. Don't get charged anything. Everything's good. I leave. I get a taxi. I tell them where I am. I come in here and I like pass out almost immediately. And then the next day I was, was the first well, I was up at, you know, 6 or 7 ready for training. So that was the trip getting here for those interested. And I feel like um I feel like I was going to be more animated when I was thinking about it. On the, cause on the way here, I was like, man, I'm going to have a crazy story to tell. But now I find just thinking about it makes me so exhausted that uh, I'm not really a good storyteller uh, with that aspect. Okay, I'm taking a break from the storytelling for a moment. And we're going to talk about, I'm going to do a segment uh, while I have your attention. And I want to do the album of the week or the music of the week, or whatever, and this week's album of the week is Rhapsody of Fire, Prometheus. Hopefully you can see that alright. Is that like, it's reversed, isn't it? Yeah, it is reversed. Well, anyway, if you flip it, if you if you flip the cover, that's what it looks like. So, Zach, my best friend Zach gave me this for the trip to listen on the way down. This is when I had the CD player installed um, and I listened to it while I was still in Maine actually. Jeez, I think I was only about an hour into my drive. <coughs> oh my god. I think I was only about an hour into my drive and I decided to throw that in there. And at the time I had been in a pretty uh, big mood for Rhapsody. Um, this is Luca Turrell's Rhapsody, sorry, um, for the power metal fans listening. You'll know that Rhapsody of Fire split off into two separate bands. Uh, so this album is its really good. Um, it's neoclassical power metal, um, very, very fast, lots of, and, and very Italian, lots of operatic uh, vocals and um, you know if you if you know Luca Turrell's guitar work, which I'm sure none of you do, um, it's a lot of uh, sweeping and fast, just really really fast stuff. I guess I don't really know why I wanted to do a album of the week thing, but I think I find I, I I'm interested in the music that I listen to and. I find that a lot of the music I listen to, other people don't listen to, and maybe they might be interested in listening to some of it and trying it, um, if you like, you know, metal, typically. Uh, so, and also I wanted to shine some light on Zach being uh, kind enough to just give me this for the, uh, for the trip. Um, you know, because he really likes this album, and I really like the album too. Uh, unfortunately, I have no way of listening to it now, because I don't have a uh, 
CD player in my computer or anywhere else here. So I can't really listen to it. And that goes for the Holy Filth album that I performed on. I can't I can't even get the CD of it because I would have nothing to play it on. So anyway, first week of training is done. Um, officially a part of the Storm Wrestling Academy. It's crazy to... Um, it's really weird being here. Um, would I take a step back? You know, he just posted the class photo with me in it. And it's like... I think about um, when I first decided that I wanted to do this about three years ago. Maybe even longer ago. When... I mean, I knew I wanted to start wrestling probably around when I got out of college, but I, I, I was still in this sort of uh, denial where my family had just paid for this college tuition and I didn't want to not pursue what they had invested in, but I wasn't really pursuing it anyway. Going from where I was, um, just sort of dreaming about doing this, and, and uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is when it, when it creeps up on you, you know, if you've ever had goals to do anything, um, when you finally get there, it, it kind of comes out of nowhere, um, because the whole time up to that point, you're just focusing on the next step, the next step, you know? I had the job at Spencer's and I was saving money the best I could and then I got the supervisor position there and I was saving that money and then I you know learned phlebotomy and then I uh, a while later I got the job doing phlebotomy and um, then I quit Spencer's and did full-time phlebotomy and saved up the money that way and you know before you know it, you're already going, you know? And then the whole time you're traveling here, you're just focusing so much on surviving each day, you know? You're just thinking about driving, listening to my Lord of the Rings audiobook, and, you know, eating and gassing up and making sure I'm going the right way, and, you know, then you finally get here and then you're unpacking, and then before I even have a second to even get my bearings and know where I am, I'm in the Storm Wrestling Academy. I'm in the school that I've seen pictures and, and videos of that I've been wanting to go to for years. Um, it's a really, really strange feeling. And I felt like I had a lot to say. Um, I don't know how well any of this is going to translate and I keep bouncing the fucking camera because it's just my laptop screen, which is why the quality is not top notch. And I can never stop my leg from bouncing. But I do have the keepsakes that people sent uh, sent me here with. I had them on my car dash, my Kardashian. So from Sherry, from Spencer's, had this. Rowdy Rowdy Piper, of course. Hot Rod, I got the Punisher, Frank Castle from Norma, again from Spencer's. And then I got The Undertaker. Uh, and this was on my farewell cake um, from the hospital that Tracy got me. Uh, so these guys, they traveled with me here, and and I like to consider this to be a keepsake too. And I have a few other things. Um, I had to cut my Jedi pendant off of uh, off of my neck. Um, because I couldn't really untie it. It's this kind of waxy thing. You know, and there's no jewelry allowed um, in the class. Obviously, you don't want to get smacked in the tooth or something like that. So I'm hanging on to it, obviously. I'm sort of looking at it as uh, maybe this is just some more, uh, more advanced Jedi training, you know. I'll be able to wear this again when I get home, when my training's complete. So week one's in the bag, there's only 11 left, you know, and I, I'm really starting to understand where everything I've read about the training says that, you know, it's going to go by really quickly. Um, the days go by really, really quickly when you're training. Um, wake up, 
Uh, I usually wake up at 6. Um, training starts at 9. I like to be up a few hours before I have to do things like that. So I can have coffee and I can just kind of become human again. Um, do a little bit of stretching, watch some YouTube videos or listen to music or whatever it is that I need to do to sort of feel human again, like I said. And go there, take the bus there, meet up with uh, the Aussies and my uh, my uh, roommates from London, and we all go. And it's really cool, so, I mean, the, the people that are in the... The Storm Dorm, which is Lance Storm's house that he rents the rooms to. There's three Australians, uh, a Irish dude. There was a kid from Washington, but he actually just quit. Um, just yesterday, actually, surprisingly. And the, my my roommate is from London, so a lot of a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life. We take the bus there in the morning. We uh, Listen to Lance Storm's stories of being on the being on the road, working with all kinds of people while we're stretching up and doing all that, and then we do a bunch of circuits of training. We do push-ups and and and, uh, and footwork drills and uh, sit-ups and not lunges. Why am I thinking lunges? Squats. There we go. Squats and planks and leg raises and, and sit-ups. I already said that, and and it's uh very fast paced and but everybody's paced at their own pace which is good you know he's not kicking people out for not being like you know prototypical uh athletes you know we're here to train to be athletes and we've been learning collar and elbow tie-ups and arm bar and uh front wrist locks and hammer locks and go behinds and all the all kinds of counters that go with each of these and he's really setting a strong I feel he's setting a very strong foundation and he's very scientific and I knew he was which is why I wanted to get trained by him um, but he gets very into the science of how to do the moves and how to take the moves and why we do them when we do them and uh, how to do them so you don't get hurt and how you don't hurt anybody else. Speaking of which, doing bumps, obviously. Lots and lots of bumps and rolls. Uh, you know, I guess there's not a whole lot to say, you know. I'm doing this progress report thing. One, because I just, you know, I wanted to do it. I didn't really want to do it today, to be honest. I wanted to do it yesterday, but I just didn't really have time. And then today, I just, I don't know, my head's in the clouds today for some reason. Like I said, I've just been lazy. Laziness isn't good for your mind. I guess my progress report right now is that I made it to Calgary. I didn't die. Um, I lost my car. I came here by car for two reasons. One, it was going to be cheaper for the flight. And two, I would have a car when I got here. And now neither of those apply because I spent so much money on the car rental and... <clears throat> Um, just, uh, I can't think of anything right now because my head's in the clouds, but I, I spent it on so many things that it ended up costing as much as the plane ticket here would have been, and I don't have a car. So, besides the worldly experience that I got from such an endeavor, I pretty much didn't get anything. I, I didn't gain anything. All I did was lose time that could have been spent um, with my loved ones and my friends, you know, and it just kind of sucks. And I do miss everybody. I gotta put some of this shit on. My lips are killing me. So here I am. I'm in Calgary. Calgary. This would be a good time to uh, officially announce what my current working name is. Now would be a good time to talk about what I want my current working title. Uh, my current working name is right now. Calvin Michael Strange. This fucking kid. I can't even fucking do this fucking video. I can't think. Because there's so much fucking shit going on behind me. I have to actually do this so I can not hear what's going on around me. And just sort of fucking focus. All I wanted to talk about was my name uh, in the wrestling industry. As of right now, 
that I'm working with is Calvin Michael Strange, KMS, Your Pal Cal, etc., etc. And um, I chose this name for a multitude of reasons, none that I really feel like getting into right now, but what I might talk about another time. Yeah, I just wanted uh, you guys to know, um, because, you know, like I said, you guys supported me, and you guys told me to go on this journey and be gung-ho, and, and uh, without your, kind, your support, I don't think I would be here. So I guess that's uh, that's gonna wrap up. I can't. I, this is a this was a shitty. This has got to be the worst journal entry thing ever. I just can't think today. My head hurts. These fucking kids are crying. This is sports upstairs. I just I can't focus on anything right now. So anyway, that's it. You're done. I'll see you guys next week. I'll do a second one every week. I will keep you updated on what I'm learning, how I'm learning it, how I'm doing, and it'll be a good outlet for me, maybe, emotionally. Um, and, yeah. Until then, see you next time.